This episode of Twin Speaks contains spoilers. Hello and welcome to Twin Speaks First Watch First Listen of Shazam starring Zachary Levi, Mark Strong, Asher Angel, Asher Angel, and Jack Dylan Grazer. Directed by David F. Sandberg and written by Henry Gaden. Uh, I am your co-host Pat. You can find me on Twitter at Kid Combo, and I am of course joined by my twin brother and co-host. You can find him on social media at Anemonium. It's Andrew. I think it was Shazam. <laughs> it was oh, an exclamation a little line. oof on that one. <laughs> <laughs> a little fun. <laughs> Uh, is that the guy's the kid's name, Asher Angel? Is it Angel? Why are you asking me? I looked it up. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. Okay, so of the two of us, <laughs> the person who looked it up is going to ask the person that didn't look it up. I don't know. I'm just it's a weird last know. name. I've never heard of that last name. I've never heard of a lot of different last names. I haven't heard of a last name. Like as a last name? No, just uh, a last name. <laughs> okay. Pat a last name. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah the, we saw uh, shazam 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 on <laughs> saturday last saturday um yeah what were the previews before that one i don't remember actually there was one it was like oh that looks really good uh i don't remember at all i can't remember any of them i can't remember any of them but you obviously remember one of them you yeah said it was which good. one was it i, can't I feel like that. that's pretty safe though it'd be like one of them i'm not into one of, <laughs> one them, of them looks good, good. <laughs> the other two eh. so so no i, I can't like even remember four. what they were now i don't know either good start so far yeah geez um <laughs> not a lot of news though this this week we kind of went over a lot of stuff last week because there was like all the the giant merger and then there was like the yeah a bunch of trailers that came out and stuff this week, not so much. Oh, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, right away. So, did you hear um, the Avengers, the new Avengers movie, Endgame? They released all the character posters for it. Yeah. Which is like a really cool, I thought it was cool, like um, way of doing it. Because they give you 32 all together. Yeah. And then half of them are blacked out, and then half of them are sort of lit up, <laughs> not like. I thought you were going to say half of them were black. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't think that's half probably of them pretty are, close. <laughs> uh, I thought it was cool. It was kind of a neat, like we were talking about before, that it's kind of a neat way of doing it because then you sort of have like a very, like, in front of you list of who's yeah. dead and who's alive going into the new movie. They should have, like, done an expanded version <laughs> and it's just like you you can submit like your facebook profile picture yeah. <laughs> 3.5 billion people <laughs> that'd be awesome <laughs> Dude, like a bunch of just random ass people yeah it's and like... you just you just find out if you were killed or not oh i see so snap. it's like uh yeah. so it's like a quiz so you like su- submit your name submit like a picture and then it tells you whether or not you died <laughs> yeah yeah and then it compiles them all. Yeah. And the NSA is now involved. Oh, yeah. And this is just a real-time way of tracking people. Just like Instagram. Is it? What was that? Um, the 10-year challenge? I be- Hold on. I bet if we... I bet if I say... Hold on. Let me open Instagram. <laughs> if I say something like a brand that I don't... Okay, I've never bought... In- oh, it just buzzed. There's something different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was spooky. <laughs> um, if uh, if I let's say like I don't know what what's a brand I don't buy. Uh, let's say Lacenza. Okay. Is that how you say it, Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it right? Lacenza. Lacenza. Yeah. Lacenza. <laughs> if I say Lacenza. <laughs> Lacenza. I bet I'm gonna get an ad for Lacenza by the end of this episode. Is this just to? Uh, cover up the fact that you were googling Lacenza. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this happened with Bird's Bees. Now I'm going to go in for Bird's Bees. <laughs> I did I was just talking about Bird's Bees and I've never I've never like bought anything from Bird's Bees. I've never like said it's not like some it doesn't come up in conversation. <laughs> I I I'm told, like, what's your favorite name for a bee? Bert. There. <laughs> See like it doesn't work. <laughs> I was talking about uh actually today I was on Facebook or no, it was uh, one of the articles I was looking up and it was like an ad and I was t- telling someone about army boots 
and how there's like these really like futuristic looking army boots and it was like a part of a conversation and then i looked at this ad and that was the thing that came up was army boots spooky i've never looked up army boots in my life yeah this Let is the thing, had a this is the thing with Burt's Bees. And all of a sudden, I got an Instagram ad for Burt's Bees. Like, Facebook's different because, like, you can turn off the mic. But, like, the Instagram one, I've turned it off. I still get ads for it. Yeah. I'm not I'm not Googling Burt's Bees. <laughs> I'm not Googling Licenza either. Like, I'm just going to get an ad for Licenza. So, the moral of this is... I don't remember what we were talking check about. Check in later and Andrew will update You have to remind Instagram. me. I'm not going to remember. I'm just going to go home and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get an update and we'll uh, share it on the Instagram page. What were we talking about? Oh, the Avengers thing. The post. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, yeah. they should kill. F- so No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> <They should. laughs> it would have been cool if they did like a three. It would have been like cool if they did like the entire population or yeah. something or like half the Instagram followers they have or something like that. That actually would have been cool. You just get blocked. I did see. By <laughs> Jeremy Renner. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that uh, there was like a thing on someone had found and I saw it on Reddit. And it was like in Civil War, there's like a table and there's like nine of them or something at this table. Yeah. And it's Tony's, like split in half. Tony's sitting on the side and the three on one side. But he's like side. way off in the corner. It's like Don, uh, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle? Yep. Don Cheadle. Two others. <laughs> Chris Evans, then, I think, is yeah. there. Yeah. And then like uh, Scarlet Witch? Yeah, I think so. And then on the other side, it was uh, Paul Bettany, some yeah. Vision. And then it was... Essentially, they it was everybody that was on the right side of the table who died. Find it, yeah. Everybody on the left side of the table was still alive, and then Tony was like off in the corner. Yeah, so it was very being, like like alluding to representative him. Yeah. of yeah. I, I thought this. it was a really neat find. It was like such a cool thing to. to yeah, but like that happened in Civil War. Like part of me is yeah. like, did they really plan this far ahead? I don't know. Maybe it was just like let's have them sit here, and then maybe they like. Rewatch Civil War and that influenced their decision on who no, survived and who died. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like maybe it was sort of a reverse thing. Either way, it was a kind of a neat find, and uh, yeah, it, I think this whole thing with Endgame is going to be kind of neat and really cool how they're already doing it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm excited for that. That did comes you, out in May, right? Did you see that? Uh, yeah, like a month away now. Mm-hmm. No, April. Is it April? Oh it's yeah, it's April. like end of April. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. You see that Angelina Jolie is supposed to be in the Eternals. Yeah, I just I was gonna. And then say I that saw too. something else too. Is uh, Zac Efron might be Adam Warlock. I actually like that. I, I wish he was doing other stuff because like I feel like he's like. I honestly don't know if he's a good actor though. I don't know. I'm so undecided on him. Yeah. But I think that in terms of Adam Warlock being like, I've always imagined him as like a very good looking, suave kind of looking guy. Yeah. And that's Zach, like that's fits Zach Efron, I think. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind Should of should be Matthew thing. McConaughey. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I actually like that. But anyway, Angelina Jolie doing the Eternals. Eternals, yeah, that's kind of neat. That's going to be a weird movie, though. Yeah, but that's sort of off the radar for her. I didn't really expect her to do. Maybe it's like maybe that. it's more disconnected, and that's why she's like into it. Yeah, it could be. It might be a one and done type yeah. thing too. Um, speaking of superhero stuff, though, they there's a new image of Joker starring Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, I saw this. They said I the one like thing I read was that it was just a dive into, um, Killing Joke. Was it? Oh, I don't know. Was that what you were gonna say? No, I was gonna say it was like I was trying to think of something funny to say, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> um, I, it was a, no, it was a dive into like the life of somebody that's like mentally ill. Oh, interesting. Which I thought was kind of an interesting like yeah. take on it, like a more normal person, like more of a like a much more grounded way of like approaching this movie sure, or yeah. just that character maybe. I don't like I don't know. I'm undecided about it. Well, a lot of the ones just from this sort of picture because it's kind of a neat picture. It's like black and white, but he's sort of sitting on a bed or a couch. Yeah. And it just he looks kind of just sad, I guess. I don't know. He's wearing normal clothes. He's yeah. not in his yeah. Joker outfit. But a lot of the comments were about it being like the tone of the picture and the tone of the rest of the stuff that we've gotten so far is very uh, parallel to the killing joke, like struggling comedian. It kind of looks like he's yeah, like dressed kind of like era the origin part. But that that part, that stuff is so like it's not a lot of that book. Yeah, no, it's like a very like. 
for specific beginning. Not to of like it. spoil a lot of that book, but like it's a good book. It's like part of it's him as like a struggling comedian, and he like takes on a job to like pretend to be the Red Hood. Yeah. Which is just like a rotating mobster, basically. Yeah, it's just like someone to pin it on. Yeah, and then, and then the rest of the book is him like he's kidnapped uh, Commissioner Gordon. And yeah. And it's kind of like a flashback to him when he shot Barbara. It's just like it's kind of an all over the place thing. And I don't think that's what. So like, maybe, I don't know if you can focus that much on like the origin. So maybe part. they're just focusing specifically on the beginning bit. So like him being the maybe. comedian and this stuff. Maybe that's just sort of because you there no other movie has really done that. I think that I can think of. I think maybe that what they're doing is they're taking that characterization and they're just like expanding on it and like doing something that maybe isn't in the books and they're just sure, kind of yeah. doing their own thing. Could be cool. But it though. is called the Joker, so you think that it would be like, like you know, it's not called like, I don't know. Joe something. Joe funny guy. I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, like it's very specifically named after the character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe funny guy. <laughs> um, Michael B. Jordan will star in a new Warner Brothers thriller called Methuselah. <laughs> Methuselah? It's based on the I biblical story of a man who lived to be 969 years old. What? Originally, Will Smith and Tom Cruise were attached to play the Michael B. Jordan character. Uh, with Zach Dean writing the early draft of the script, but now Tony Gilroy has rewritten the script. Weird. It's Tony, Tony Gilroy, uh, yeah, uh, Velvet Buzzsaw. Yeah, I, don't, I can't really imagine like Tom Cruise playing. Yeah, like Michael B. Jordan. There's, but <laughs> Will Smith, I can see doing it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, there's nothing <laughs> else about this, and I, to be honest, like the, I have no the idea whole idea sounds yeah. hilarious. It sounds neat. Like, is he going to be the 969-year-old man? Just or is it- fucking ripped. <laughs> <laughs> He's he like, how do you think I've survived this long? Carrots. Squit, squats and curls. <laughs> Squits. Squits and earls. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I have no idea. Like, that's sort of all that, that... There's a title, and then there's like a sort of a plot summary, but that's it. Um, apparently, though, he's working on a new uh, monster movie. An untitled monster movie with the Kong Skull Island director. Who is who? Uh, Michael B. Jordan. No, the director. Oh, Jordan Voight Roberts. Oh, I'm surprised you wrote that down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just says that he his like him and his production Sweet. company are like working on something together. That's cool. Yeah, I hope monster movies make a resurgence. Me too. Let Apparently me the. Then I just read this in passing. I didn't write it down, but the uh, Godzilla movies. Yeah, I saw this because they're, they're like the people who own the rights to Godzilla. I forgot what yeah. the group's called, but they're like holding out to see what their reviews are. They're gonna holding be like. out to renew the rights. Yes, to Universal. Universal. Uh, Legendary. Legendary. To before, like they want to see the reception of the two yeah. movies before, like giving them the rest of it to yeah. like do whatever they want. Which is fine, do. but also I don't see this these movies bombing. No, I don't. I don't think so. I think that the this uh, King of the Monsters one looks amazing, and mm-hmm. like honestly, like if they just looked at that one instead of like versus King Kong, yeah, like I'm, I'm sure it'd be fine. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for all those movies, and I think they actually look really good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> Warner Brothers animated Scooby Doo film has finished casting. Yeah, I saw this. Will Forte's in it. That's yeah, crazy. Will Forte is playing uh, Shaggy. Yeah, did you hear like the controversy with the Shaggy casting? Though? Yeah, is because that the that dude guy who for found out that he didn't get it through Twitter announcing that Will Forte was going to be. Yeah, it. but it's not a live action one. No, it's animated. Yeah, which is so, crazy for the cast too. Yeah, because Zach Efron will play Fred. Yeah, sick. Uh, Amanda Seyfried will play Daphne. Will Forte, like we said, playing Shaggy. Gina Rodriguez will play Velma. And Tracy Morgan will play Captain Caveman. Oh, what? Yeah, I don't know. I I read Captain that part Caveman. and I was like, and then there's a picture attached to it. Uh, and I was like, what yeah. the hell? Uh, and then Frank Welker, who did the 69 to 70 uh, Scooby-Doo voice, uh, is also coming back. Sweet. Too. So, so that's he's the neat. only returning cast then. Pretty much, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that's sick. I'm looking at the picture now. <laughs> so weird. Like, 
Is like Scooby Doo? Is that still running? Like, is that still a cartoon know. that's still like around? That's what I was confused about. Uh, I'm gonna look. Cause like that's what like the what the caveman guy is such like an odd like inclusion in this too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a fucking movie. That came <laughs> the movie's wild. Have you watched? It didn't like. It's so weird. It's pretty trippy. Yeah. The CGI Isla Fisher's is in it. Weird. Rowan Atkinson's in it. Yeah. Pamela Anderson. Sugar Gay. <laughs> Have you seen that video? Not to get really distracted. The that sugar video Ray goes, it's the sugar, sugar Ray guy, gay. and the, it's like a kid. Yeah, and he's like more like sugar gay. And yeah. like, who like, said that? And he's like, he just starts threatening this kid. And, and this the kid's kid like, like good for him. He's he just keeps calling him so sugar funny. gay. It's so funny. <laughs> not that, not that gay is funny, no, but, but like, like in the context of being called sugar gay, this then, guy just took exception to it. Yeah, and it's like how his reaction to it is just so over the top, and the kids like. Wearing a backpack, like, yeah, he's, he's just like, like this kid, like passing on the street, saw him. He's like, oh shit, that Sugar Ray. I don't know his first name, but that's Sugar Ray. <laughs> We're like Sugar Gay. Got him. He's, yeah, like, he's and he, like he's by himself, so he's not even gonna like turn around and have fun yeah. with his buddy either. He's just gonna like he didn't have a camera. No, the didn't. only reason that you know it's him is because like paparazzi. Were there. Yeah, and like he did it for his own enjoyment, uh, which is so much more respectable. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I only dream of seeing the lead singer from Sugar Ray and just being like, more like sugar, sugar, almost sexual. <laughs> sugar. Who said that? Sugar, I don't know your sexual orientation. <laughs> yeah. More like sugar, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> more like sugar, not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Side of all that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. I don't remember what we were talking about. Oh, Scooby Doo. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so apparently the new James Bond film titled uh, Bond 25 has already begun filming. Um, according to M16HQ and the Daily Mail, shooting has begun in Norway M- as of yesterday. What? Wait, what? M16 and the Daily Mail? Yeah. Why does it sound like a band? <laughs> no, those are two different separate things. <laughs> M16 and the Daily Mail. Or like a really bad radio station early morning radio station kevin yeah. and the bean <laughs> <laughs> wait what what was that what you said it's like kevin, kevin and, and the, the bean, bean. <laughs> that's a real one no, i didn't even make that one up <laughs> m16 and the daily mail <laughs> <laughs> was that one for parks and rec something in the douche <laughs> ira and the douche <laughs> yeah ira <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny all right we listened to um the podcast with Nick or uh, Pete Holmes and Andy Samberg. And he was talking about um, uh, John Mulaney. And they were like talking about that show that they do. Uh, yeah. What was it called? The, where they play the old guys. Yeah. I don't remember what it's called though. Yeah. I don't remember either, but they were talking about how uh, Nick Kroll's or someone, one of their friends went and saw it. Yeah. And uh, they were like talking about it. Oh, um, Andy Samberg's like, one of the two other guys from the <laughs> island. He went and saw the show and then he told Andy Samberg about it. And he's like, yeah, it was like easily like the, the hardest I've laughed in like years. Like he said, it was just so unbelievably funny. And then he's like, but I got a question. Is John Mulaney Jewish? And he goes, no, I don't think so. And then <laughs> whoever it was goes, because this, pretty much like jewish blackface like he's completely <laughs> he's ripping completely it off stereotyping yeah the jewish old jewish guys <laughs> and like they they were all like andy sandberg's jewish uh his, yeah the yeah, other yeah, yeah, two yeah. guys from lonely Island. and then nick kroll's jewish yeah so do you think nick and kroll like, so they were like <laughs> and andy sandberg's like yeah like it was really funny to think like that he's basically doing jewish blackface but also he's an honorary jew he, I, he was honestly, like, like, no, it's okay, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Which he's, I don't know if that really no, counts. I don't think that counts either. <laughs> we're not Jewish, so we're not here to say. But yeah, it, I'm making a definitive experience. call as a non-Jew. <laughs> that it's okay. <laughs> uh, but he was like, it's not going to get you into Israel. Being hey. an honorary. Jew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, that just. I forgot what we were talking about. I think that. they just let you in if you just go fuck Palestine, and then they just like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we're gonna steer away from this. Uh, <laughs> um, Down with the Palestinians. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but M16HQ is like a James Bond like 
movie blog. Like that's oh. all they do is <laughs> James Bond stuff. I could have guessed, but yeah, right. When you read it, you're like the M16. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> M16s. No, MI6. Like... Sorry, I keep calling it M16s. MI6. M16. <laughs> 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 and the Daily Mail. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess they they had already like they were, the M M I six was saying that the Daniel Craig was like in the gym for like twelve hours a day, getting ready for dude. Him. That's not humanly possible. That's, and the and the daily the article the Daily Mail Mail references that and they go that's not possible yeah I have you seen like, I don't think the rock even does that no <laughs> and as the biggest guy I personally know <laughs> I feel like the rock would know <laughs> um but yeah that's kind of cool uh bond 25 it'll be it was 14 years ago that Daniel Craig started yeah, as weird James Bond yeah weird do you have a front runner that you would For like what? to see playing oh. the new James Bond John Mulaney <laughs> He's already not Jewish, so that's good. <laughs> he wears a suit a lot of the time. <laughs> like he's he's got. I mean, I feel like he could just like work out twelve hours a day and get there. <laughs> no, I don't think much would change. I think I think <laughs> Daniel Craig, without twelve hours a day of, of working Wait, out no. in the gym, is John Mulaney. John Mulaney as James Bond, and then Nick Kroll as Q. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a crawl show bit. <laughs> that could have been. That sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't really have one either. Does it have to be British, eh? Yeah, yeah. That'd be funny if it wasn't. Yeah. Tom Cruise. <laughs> really <laughs> fucking Just Mission short. Impossible. Just Mission Impossible. <laughs> he keeps mispronouncing his M16. <laughs> <laughs> keeps saying. Sorry, is it Qua? 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 Is it Qua? No, it's, it's Q. Oi, mom. It's a, no, he's, so he's doing an accent? Yeah, he's pretending to be. Oi, uh, oi mom. Uh, oi, but mom. it's like very cocky. Oi, Q. <laughs> oi, Q. You having another day or something? <laughs> this oh, man, is wildly offensive. <laughs> Maybe I'm trying to do a bad first accent. Um, yeah. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I don't. Do you have one? No. Okay, so you just asked was me. Mine. <laughs> that was that was I your do. that was your go to. It's mom. just whoever can do a bad British accent <laughs> is your front runner. Uh, Jim Jarmusch is uh Jarmusch Jarmusch. I sat at home today trying to figure out how to pronounce this for like fifteen minutes. I I I, I started saying it out loud. Like I just couldn't it's, yeah. couldn't get the pronunciation right. And I it's like the one name that you see all the time that you read about all the time. You know what he looks like. And I can hear it in my head, but I can't just, I can't make my mouth I feel say like, it. <laughs> isn't this just you with every... Yeah, that's probably. And what was the first one you said today? Angel? Angel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's the same thing. Jim Drummatch. <laughs> His uh, uh, new... Uh, 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 <laughs> upcoming zombie movie titled The Dead Don't Die will include an environmental catastrophe that sets off the outbreak. Yeah, this looks cool. Yeah, I am drivers in it. It has a lot of big names. Adam Driver, Bill Murray, Tilda Swinton, uh, Chloe Sevigny, uh, Steve Buscemi, Caleb Landry Jones, Selena Gomez, Tom Waits, and Danny Glover. Yeah. That sounds like a Wes Anderson. Danny Glover? Yeah. Oh, sweet. That sounds like a Wes Anderson cast. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, but if you like the, what was the thing of Don... Kyote. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the movie that's coming the out. The Taron Gale one. Yeah. Oh, I thought he did that. No. Oh, that was mind. Taron. Because I was going to say that is very like West. Like that one. Yeah. Trailer and that has looks a very West Anderson. So quirky and funny. And I thought that was Jim Um, This looks really good. I, I keep reading about it. Uh, the fact that him doing a zombie movie seems super out of character. So I'm like, like that seems cool. Yeah, it looks cool. And um, Drivers, obviously. I mean, like. He can do no wrong. Yeah. He can I, do the no wrong. last Jim Jarmusch, uh, I tried. Um, You're movie not. That we saw was, <laughs> what was the last one? Patterson. Did you see that? No, I'm looking up what. How to say oh, it. Oh, Patterson's the one with the po- poetry. Yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. it's him in Patterson, and it's based off of the poet. 
and I forgot his name. Anyway, it, he just plays like a bus driver and he writes poetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually really liked it. George and I saw it in theaters. I thought it was great. He hasn't done like a ton though. Not recently. I think that was honestly in like 2017. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, um, I, I honestly don't like have a clue how this is gonna go then. Yeah, I don't know either. But whatever. I'm excited. Cool cast. So, um, yeah, moving on. The last little bit here, uh, Unicorn Store, which is Brie Larson's directorial debut, has received its first trailer. So that comes out on Netflix April 5th, and it stars Brie Larson, Samuel L. Jackson, Samuel L. Jackson, and Joan Cusack. I Sorry, I watched this trailer. I didn't listen to it. Okay. What would you think? It, it just kind of looks like... I don't know, like kind of cookie cutter, but like, yeah, I don't think I think it looks cool. Like it looks like bright and colorful. Yeah, and it looks like enjoyable. But like, I think this is going to be like a well-reviewed movie. It is. But, though. Isn't it out already? Uh, well, I thought that out. it had like reviews already. Oh, I didn't see. But I it just looks a little too like it's just not really a me movie. That's all it is. It just kind of looks like very I don't know. Like, you read the description of this, and you go, yeah, I can imagine what that is. Oh, I got you. Because the, the synopsis is, Kit is a failed artist who moved back in with her parents and takes a job up as an office worker. One day, she receives a mysterious letter from an unnamed salesman who invites her to the store, a strange, uh, indeterminate place that sells what you need. The salesman, salesman offers her a chance to have it... Um, to have it sell her ch- what to what are whatever. you doing i'm trying to read it okay and then it's all messed up <laughs> whatever fuck it lexi is kicking in <laughs> if you're gonna make fun of me i'm not gonna read it well uh, you just struggled more than you normally do <laughs> oh, normally do oh god 68 oh, percent only 19 it. reviews oh okay yeah, I, I think it'll be fine. I think like whatever. I think it premiered at Sundance, but I don't remember now. Comes out April fifth. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. It looks like okay. I'm probably gonna see it, but yeah, I think it'll be just sort of fun, nice movie. A fun, nice movie. Yeah, but it's cool to see Samuel Jackson in like a role like that too. Yeah. Um. Okay, that was kind of it. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about? No. Uh. Okay. Shazam. Shazam. Uh, starring Zachary Levi, Mark Strong, Asher Angel, and Jack Dylan Grazer. Directed by David F. Sandberg and written by Henry Gayden. Uh, so the synopsis of the movie is one year after Stephen Wolf's invasion, uh, troubled 14-year-old orphan Billy Batson is set to move in with the Va- Vasquez family and their five other foster kids. Uh, one day, Billy gets on a subway car and finds himself transported to a different realm where an ancient wizard gives him the power to transform into a godlike adult superhero by uttering the word Shazam. Duh. Uh, Billy <laughs> and his new foster brother, Freddie Freeman, must discover Billy's new powers and how to use them to prevent the villain, Dr. Thaddeus Savannah, who has the powers of his own from committing nefarious acts. Where do you get these synopsis from? Wikipedia. This like- Wikipedia oh, okay. and IMDb. That was a long one, hey? Yeah, the Wikipedia ones are long, and the IMDb ones are like super short. And oh, I succinct. see. Yeah. I didn't. That's so weird that it included the Stephen Wolf thing. Yeah, that's not. That's why I included this one. It is like it, there. No. You get no sort of indication that that. Yeah. Is a time frame like this seems so disconnected from absolutely everything. Almost everything DC except outside for the fact of the that... last five seconds. Well, and because they reference. Batman and, and Superman through the entire movie. Yeah, but like, yeah, you're right. Like, and that's the only other indication. But like, I feel like that would also happen in just like a normal like teenager movie too, or like kids movie like this, like of like superhero paraphernalia everywhere. Yeah, you know? because like the thing is like him having the batarang is almost like yeah, I any, guess that's the beginning. But it's of any it, yeah. kid going to like Comic Con and being like, oh, I bought a batarang. Yeah, or the bullet. Or the or bullet. Something. It's like yeah. So I guess <laughs> that's like them being like, see it like, and like that one po- the post post credit scene too. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, like that's, that's weird. That you get so no, I totally forget that that's, that even happened too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird. 
I thought they were trying to stray away from that. I thought so too, and that's why I was. That's why I I, I copied that one because, the, yeah, like you said, there's no it indication through the entire movie that that event happened. Yeah, nobody says it. No. Nobody references is anything. It's just like it just seems like a normal everyday movie. Yeah, and then he becomes Shazam. So I don't know. Weird. Um. So what did you think? What, I really liked it. It was yeah. so funny. I the jokes like there is definitely sort of like a 15 minute buffer period that you kind of just like wait out. Yeah. And then like once once he gets powers, then it's funny and it's like just does not stop being funny. Yeah. But it, like it does, I will say though that like does take its time setting to get up there. Yeah. Fair enough. And it doesn't again like I I feel like I said the word indication quite a bit, but like it doesn't give you any sort of indication that it's supposed to be a comedy until 15 minutes in. Like, you're not sort of like, you. they don't like lead you on with a joke outside like the cop thing, but then like, and then just like leave it and then it's like really dull, 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 and then it comes back. Like, I feel like they do a good job of being sort of like, yeah, it's it's whatever and we're setting it up and then it, you sort of yeah. take off. Yeah. All of a sudden you're in it. Yeah. Yeah, because the beginning of it, it's you sort of learn that like his motivation in life is to find his mom because he's an orphan. He's an orphan who wasn't given up. Yeah. At first, like necessarily like he, he was an orphan that like got, got misplaced and lost. Yeah. yeah. And then like, so he kind of sees that as like the driving force of this movie is that he feels like he was like wrongfully orphaned. Yes. And because he was like a young kid and at a fair and then the mom just like hey. lost him and then yeah. he couldn't like, so like couldn't his memory of it is so different than what actually happened where he was sort of like just ditched like yeah that, they were just like fuck no which is i don't want because, this weird kid in his compass <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> which is great because like then it's not so hard to see him like when he gets into the the family home where it's like all these other kids and stuff and he kind of doesn't want to be around them it's not like oh like this isn't sort of normal for a kid to just give up he actually wants to continue looking yeah. for him and he's like disappearing and and that's why it's kind of like uh, nobody's concerned about him missing you know because that's just what he does he's just looking for his mom yeah, but still. That, yeah yeah i think that like that's tricky because like like it it like he they say that like he goes missing all the time like he runs off all the time yeah. and he's run off from x amount of families and so they when they were like they don't have him they're like no like we were like his new foster parents the ones he kind of settled into like they were like oh like we've done this and they were like yeah but he's been here for two days yeah yeah so i don't know like i think that it's tricky from like that kid perspective to be like no it's okay he'll he just does this but um, yeah like i think that was it felt like it it felt like the kid could give a shit about his like foster family and I know that was the intention, so like I felt like that definitely like rung true. It's like it feels like he doesn't care. Like yeah. he just is there because yeah. he has to be. But and, then at the same time he doesn't have to be there. And Jack Dylan Grazer who plays Who is Freddy, so funny in this is he stole every single scene I think that he did he too. Playing. I think he's a better actor than the other kid. And, yes. Yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> he was like way funnier, his Delivery was yeah. fantastic. Like he nailed almost every line that he had. Yeah, that was I think he was just me. like he. You're right. Like I think he definitely stole. <laughs> he stole like every single scene that he was in. Yeah, outside totally. of like Zachary Levi, who, who is like, and that's why like the really... definition of a, a scene stealer in this oh, movie. Yeah. Which is funny because like almost the entire movie is the two of them together. Yeah, and they were so good just so, together. One like, of the things that I think. I didn't like now that I sort of sat on it for a while is I didn't feel like Zachary Levi was doing an impression of the kid. So you like huge spoiler, but like later in the movie, they give like yeah, the entire spoiler. They give the entire like foster family, his new foster family powers. Yes. And they all have like individual powers of Shazam. So instead of like having all powers, they have like pieces of it. Yes. And uh, what's his face from Adam George- Brody? Yeah, Adam Brody. I was gonna ask Georgia. <laughs> Adam Brody was doing an impression of Jack Dylan Grazer. 
Jack Dylan Grazer, but I didn't feel like Zachary Levi was doing an impression of the other kid. There was there was like snippets where you're like, okay, like if I was him and I was given powers, maybe I would be like elevated like this and like be sort of like a little stressed out, anxious, and like wacky. But like the only thing that made me kind of like forget and like you know like suspend disbelief was that he was just so overly funny in this and yeah. like every single time he spoke and every single delivery was funny the bit where he's like talking about he's like it's nice up here no wonder rocky wanted to get up here so bad <laughs> it was such a throwaway line but you're like that's so funny like yeah or the bit where he's like on he's like at the monument and he's like doing the He's doing lightning from yeah. his hands and he's singing it. I am Shazam. <laughs> he's going, lightning from my hands. <laughs> he wouldn't say Shazam because then he'd just get <laughs> yeah, turned right. into the kid. <laughs> but um, yeah, like that bit was funny. And like, I just, there was like parts where you're like, he's not doing an impression of the kid. Yeah. He's just being. Because Zachary Levi is like inherently way more charismatic. So, so charismatic in just this. just like every time that he was on scene, you were like, he's way more charismatic than the kid was. Yeah. Even though they're supposed to be sort of and the I same think, personality. Yeah. It it didn't and it wasn't like, oh, it's it's impossible to see that these two are pretend you know, supposed to be the same character. But also it wasn't like completely disconnected. Because there were times yeah, where there's, like, oh, yeah, there is like I guy. having said that, like there is bits where like you can see the connection, but I do think that like my overall feeling was that like he wasn't yeah. necessarily doing an impression, he was just being funny. Yes. And that's fine because it worked. But I think like if it was really like jarring and it was like if he was being like almost like like more Batman like and yeah. being more dark and serious and it wouldn't really be the same, you know, like so I think that's what made it work. It was almost like a, a kid that was just given a lot of confidence. Yeah. And, and so that, that's like fair. You just got superpowers. So like yeah. fair enough. Like you could rationalize it and you can rationalize yeah. it. I do like I think that like. The scene stealing thing is so funny because like it's true. Like the like Zachary Levi, Jack Dylan, Grazer, Glazer, Grazer, and then the other kid. Like literally every single scene that the three of them were in, you were or two of them, I guess. Yeah. You were like, Oh my god, this is great. Like they just like bouncing off each other. There's they even that really, line yeah. where they're like, Why are they arguing like an old married couple? And you're like, This is great. Like this is really great. Um I love the foster family. Yep. I thought yeah. they were all awesome. Like they were all really funny. The little funny girl and, like, was really funny. They're just like they were like very token yeah. characters. Like they were they're like the smart one and like the nerdy one and the tough one and yeah. like the, the one, one that's like the one that takes care of everybody. Yeah. But like having said that, I felt thought it was great. Like they were still like compelling enough. I thought the parents were great. Yeah. Same. Um they didn't have like a ton of lines, but No, they were just were, kinda there. Their characters were pretty important to the entire movie and yeah. like they were great. Like they nailed every you know, they were great through the entire movie. Yeah. The bullies I didn't like. Oh god, yeah. I thought they were the most like over the top cringy cringy, it was cringy yeah. representation of a bully. Yeah. Bullies nowadays they don't they don't look they don't like wear bullies. leather jackets yeah. like or drive raptor trucks too. Like that didn't all of that sort of like didn't hit for me like you know like i think he they should have just like looked like a rant like a normal kid because just, like bullies don't like i get that they were like this these bullies are different they have money yeah and that's why they're dickheads i i was confused because there was like they were the only ones in the entire school that actually have a vehicle and they drove it right up to the front yeah. i was like i was like, like where are all the cars like they and why are they look the like they've shown they look they're the they're implied that like they're old yeah but then, like, at the same time, they're so significantly older than everybody else. Like, yeah. it's almost like this was, like, a middle school that these two high schoolers went to. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't. It was, like, an all ages because, like, almost, the entire foster family went to it, yeah, too. Yeah, because at one point, the oldest sister who was, like, applying to colleges, like. So you're like, okay, she's the lunch. oldest. It's yeah. Like, Wait, what? But then you, like, yeah, I didn't, didn't get that out. Because then you don't see her through the entire movie. And he was like, oh, we just have different lunch periods, periods or whatever. Yeah. It's like, lunch is at lunch. That's no, but I, I get that part, but I didn't get the part where she was in a school with them. That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. Just, but yeah. Like the lunch period part, I get. Okay, fine. You can have that. Why is that? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I thought all the, it was cool to see uh, Digimon. 
Yeah, he. I like him. I like him. Like he he's, he was the Shazam the that gave Shazam <laughs> yeah. his powers. It was kind of neat to see him actually in this movie because I was sort of unexpected. I really liked the representation of all the the sins. I yes. love the idea that they're like monsters. Yeah. I think like something like Georgia had mentioned is that like they there's parts in it like after they sort of like take the kids and you're sort of like waiting for something bad to happen. You know, nothing's bad. Nothing. There is no stakes, you know, like there's just like there's no like they're just holding the kids and you know something's going to happen like this. He's just going to save the day or something. Yeah, and right. He does. But, like, there's nothing building up to that to be, like, you don't fear for the kids. You just know that they're just going to get out of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that kind of sucked. But, like, everything else, like, it's kind of weird that this starts off with, like, their introductions. They just straight up eat a dude and then throw that other dude at the window. He just picks up his brother. Like, they're just, like, killing people. They, they And you're like, like holy shit, this is not what I was expecting. The boardroom. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, like. This is the precedent now. Yeah, yeah. Like they're just like these are bad, bad demons, yeah, and yeah. he's a bad dude, and he's gonna straight up kill anybody. That's the only two. That's like the only room of people he kills. Yeah. The entire like the scenes where they're at, like when he's first fighting them, they don't come out. Later, when they're at the carnival, they come out, but they don't kill anybody. There's also like they never show him like fight as he's fighting Shazam in the mall and stuff. There's no like casualties. You know, like no, he's not he doesn't kill anybody because he doesn't like yeah. break anything. He's just sort of like going through walls trying to find Shazam. Also, no police ever show up in this movie. Yeah, I thought that except for the very beginning, which is him messing with the police. Yeah. You never see police. I thought like this dude isn't wearing a costume. He's just a dude. Like yeah. as far as you know, like as he's, he's flying. But like yeah. at the same time, you're like, he's just a guy. You think police would still show up to a carnival or the mall? Yeah. It's like a terrorist attack. Oh, yeah. Like, there's, like, the full... There had to have been, like, at least 20, 30 minutes go by. Yeah. Where they're, like, fighting. Or just, like, they're fighting in broad daylight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, Jack Dylan Glazer somehow makes it from, like, where the train came off the rails all the the way to the mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bus. Yeah, sorry. Bus to the mall before any police... Like, he manages to get into the mall. uh, People are escaping, and he's, like, looking for Shazam. Yeah. It's, like... What? Wait, what? That yeah, being said, I, yeah. I, I like love this movie. It was great. I love that he like uses Shazam like to turn back into Billy. Yeah. As like a way of like camouflaging. Yeah. Like he would just do it and then he'd like blend into a crowd. Yeah. That was sweet. That was like so smart. I thought it was really cool because then it was like big, a whole bunch of light and big flash and he would just be able to like run away. The scene where he jumps off. I know they like ruined this in the trailer, but like the scene where he jumps off the ceiling or yeah. the roof, the ceiling, the roof, yeah, the roof, the other side of the ceiling, <laughs> <laughs> he jumps off the roof and like says Shazam. Like that was so sick in the moment because yeah. of like what was happening. That was honestly one of yeah. the moments where I kind of got chills. Yeah, it was from, sweet. Because like how the, the scene was framed. He had just found his mom, and all of that shit was happening at the carnival and stuff, but he had decided he was yeah. going to go to the, find his mom first, finds out, oh, she actually did abandon him. And she doesn't give a shit. She doesn't give a shit about him She's also maybe in an all. abusive relationship. And so <laughs> he, like, decides that he's going to leave, and, yeah. and he, like, goes under the roof and just jumps off. It was awesome. It was, like, yeah. such a great moment yeah. in the movie. But, yeah. That was the, sweet. I think I, we should talk about the little bit with them all getting their powers yeah this was a, such a n- awesome part of the movie because it's such it was a cool so reveal unexpected i think like i i think i told you like i had read something like months and months and months maybe it, it could have been honestly like a year ago that they were going to yeah. include this it was such like a like one person reports on it and you're like okay and then it just never picks up steam and it's probably not going to happen and you're like honestly they might not have even known they might have just said this because they had read the book yeah but, like, so sick and, like, such a cool way of doing it. Like, still using something that they just kept talking about throughout the movie. Like, you got to grab the stick. You got to shoot the You're going to give me the powers. Mm-hmm. Over and over and over again. He fi- eventually, like, pieces it together. And then the scene where they're, they all, like, he's, like, say say my name. And they all go, Billy. And <laughs> it was <laughs> such, like, a good <laughs> moment. And he's, like, no, say the thing that I have to say to get the powers. And, like, the f- I love the fact that, like, I didn't think about that at first. I would be, like, I think 
initially when you see them all get powers, you're like, that's sick, but this movie just got really boring. Uh, because they now all have the same powers yeah. and like there's nothing differentiating each other. They're just all just Shazam. kids that are adults that have the yeah. cool powers. So for them to get individual powers from his powers was really cool. That was a cool yeah. way of like divvying it up. They like she was really one of them. Was she was really fast. fast. She could fly. Yeah. Uh, one of them was super strong. What was the other one? Um, Flight speed. Oh, lightning. No, lightning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lightning? Yeah. Yep. He was like shooting at his hands. Yeah, uh, yeah but that's Shazam. sweet. <laughs> no, I know. But like <laughs> when the kid... Never mind. <laughs> but like... <laughs> that was cool. That was like a cool way of like not over... Not being like too overpowered. Yep. But still being cool. And like they don't sort of indicate whether it's permanent either. Uh, I know in the book, which actually is at your house. Um, that's one of the ones I have. The new 52 one. It's in that book where they all get powers. Yeah, but it's permanent. It is permanent. Yeah. What's so funny is I remember reading that in the book, and clearly this is true because I didn't buy another one. As soon as I got to that part, I was like, this is boring. Like, yeah. I immediately stopped reading because I just yeah. lost. I was like, this is not interesting at all no. to me. But in the movie, it was like, yeah, you're right. I think it, it was worked like, because oh, of that. I don't yeah. think, I honestly don't think it would have worked the other way. No. <clears throat> it was I, a cool reveal. The dude behind us <laughs> fucking loved it. He cackled at every single like l- big like over the top Easter egg. And honestly, like people just killed themselves laughing because they yeah. could hear him through the entire theater because yeah. the theater was packed. And then you hear this like, which is crazy. This movie comes guy. out in two weeks, and like we yeah. saw it a week early or yeah. two weeks early, and like it was packed. So like obviously, I didn't feel too special actually. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Um. One of the cool things, though, is apparently you guys didn't notice, but the the tiger was like in the movie. The tiger, I didn't see the, the lapel thing was in it, but like you see it throughout the movie. You he see, kid, like, he asked for a tiger. He has a tiger on his backpack, yeah. and then when he turns into Shazam, he's got these little like yeah. uh, buttons for his cape, and they have little tigers on them. Yeah, which was which sweet. I thought was really cool. It was like such a neat little detail, and kind of like a callback because. I don't remember if then that new 52 book that he has it or not, the tiger. I think, yeah, I oh, can't he remember. goes to a zoo. Yeah, right. And it's at the zoo, yeah, right. right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought like the plot for this movie was simple, really self contained. But really, like, yeah, really so like, I don't think, I think, especially seeing Captain Marvel and then seeing this, like, I think those have been two more refreshing, like, origin story type movies. Sure. There's not a ton of focus on the origin part of it as much as there is in this. Like he's discovering his powers and stuff. It's done in such like a more playful way that yeah. like, I don't know, like it, it just seems a little bit more fresh well, and then than the it whole- has been. Like I definitely feel like we're sort of getting to that point where like they got to start doing different yeah. shit because like it's just getting way too oversaturated. To to your point, like them doing the, the Captain Marvel one where she's like, she's training and then then she's she's like oh i can finally use my powers and then she really like figures it out through like a very you know real life basis and then in this it's like it was like such a fun way of doing it because they're literally in like a warehouse and he's just doing tests yeah but it was like it's filming fun because like yeah, yeah he's fucking great. around like they light the box on fire yeah he likes it. he's like fire what was it secret fire, fire test yeah <laughs> I, I thought that was such a great way of doing it and yeah. it filled like a good amount of time it was very free flowing I thought it was great yeah yeah so I really liked that I thought that was great like I think that that was such like an interesting more fun way of doing it I think this movie though like the thing that really didn't I didn't I would say like my biggest complaint about this movie too the cinematography is so like average Mm -hmm. having said that i i think like the city scenes were nice like refreshing it's philadelphia not really a city you see for superhero movies totally so like that i'm sort of like on the fence but the fucking soundtrack for this movie oh yeah it was so overly cheesy and like it just there was one point where it just sounded like it was like royalty free music that you can use on youtube like it was just like that it was just royalty free sad music yeah that's all it was. But it was also, like so boring. If you're not tired of hearing Queen, from yeah, like true. the resurgence of Queen music, yeah, this is that's in this movie too. 
Yeah, I I don't think as it was very good. As soon as it came good. on, I was like, oh my god, like I'm so sick of this. Already. Like I think like the music music was fine, but like it's the sound, it's like the dumbass like. It was like very like piano. It was like yeah, like sad, it was kind of like music. there's like was, that Family Guy episode where it's him walking away, and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the it's the ending of Incredible Hulk. That's the one yeah. that Stewie does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's like that. It's just so boring. Yeah, it was yeah. so dumb. Yeah, and it like honestly, like there was a moment where I sort of like rolled my eyes. I'm like, oh my god, like they couldn't have picked anything different than this. If you're looking for like a stylized movie that you're not, this, that's no, not this. This is very. If you're co- looking for something with like a very kind of neat uh, design, I guess. I don't different. Know how to, it's different. a little bit different. It is different. That's great. You're you'll find that. It it is a different superhero. Like we don't we don't get this very often where it's a kid that gets superpowers. Yeah. And I think that is what makes this so interesting. Yeah. I really yeah. like this. Yeah, that, me too. I mean, as much as like we're kind of I think it was so funny. I think it was really bit. really funny. It's maybe one of the funnier movies I've watched in a little while. Totally. Yeah. Cuz like it just like Zachary Levi is so great in this. And, like, I really do think that he makes this movie. Same with uh, the other kid. Yeah. Jack Dylan Glazer. He was great. He, he was, was really, really good. And the two of them were so great together. But yeah. also, uh, I think what made this movie, like, it sort of elevated it a little bit more was every supporting character was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So you weren't sort of going, like, okay. Except for, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, one really, really shit person was... Mark Strong's uh, science director, and she's doing like the interviews, talking about the people that are getting sucked into Shazam. Oh, thing. I felt bad because like she, she starts off so strong, so bad, and then it just gets like worse and worse and worse. It was just weird delivery. What did you think of Mark Strong? He was really good. I I thought he was thought like he was a very like stereotypical yeah. villain, but I don't think you needed a crazy villain in this. Nah. I don't think that was necessary. Also, so, didn't like, really I think that fit him because. Yeah, I don't know. It was like a pretty one-dimensional, yeah, regular old villain guy. I think what makes him what makes him interesting is the sins part of it. Yeah, and how that's kind of the root of his powers. But yeah, you're right. Like he, it could have been better, and maybe it would have been better if it was Black Adam. But sure. like he's pretty, like I think he did well in a role that maybe didn't have a lot of depth to it. Yeah. Um, the last bit about Black Adam there when we were leaving because there's. Billy Batson, and then there's what the five other um, Shazam guys, right? Yeah, five. Yeah, so yeah. There's five. six all together. There's Adam Brody, and then there's yeah, older girl, youngest girl, other guy, oldest boy, other guy. youngest boy. Yeah. yeah, you're right. And then so him. The, there's six so all six, together. Yeah. They keep showing like the their seven layers. Throne. Oh yeah, throne, sorry. and there's there's seven thrones. And she, Georgia had mentioned that too. She's like, "Well, how come there was seven? It's like, oh, that's a good point. Like, yeah, I, I don't know is. if that was like an oversight or if it was sort of like a lead into Black Adam. Yeah, because he would have been on that council. But like, and then I, he would have I been was expelled. I was going back and forth about this. Is that the seven? There were seven powers. Oh yeah. So like, right? Like when he's like telling him like what powers he has. Yeah, there's seven. It's like the speed of Mercury, strength of whatever. I'm going to look it up. Yeah. But, like, that's why I said I didn't know if it fit because, like, he had all the seven powers. But also, if it was Black Adam. So, like, Adam, and Black Adam, like, keeps his powers, basically, yeah. right? But, so, and I, yeah, it was just kind of an interesting point. Because I don't know if he was maybe on that council or not. They never really say. And they don't sort of allude to there being, like, an ex-member, you know? Like, they just sort of say, I'm the last, the guy who gives him it. Uh, who Digimon plays says that he's the last oh, member sorry. of the council. There's six. Oh, okay. So there's only six. Was there? There, I, there must have been seven thrones. I there though. Were seven thrones there if there's there like seven thrones, the middle, then that makes sense. Six powers, and then it's Black Adam. Yeah. Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, Mercury. Mercury. Cool. So it's strength, speed, flight, and then other abilities is what it says. Fuck that. <laughs> okay, so what would you give the sun? Uh, I really like this. I think it was funny. I think like these giving like a review review is so weird because like I think at the time I like it and like by itself I like it. But then like and this is more of like an existential type thing. But like when you compare it to other movies, you're like it 
it was pretty average, you know, but like, I think at the time and like how funny it was because that wasn't what I was expecting. It was so much better than I was expecting. This is why the Rotten Tomatoes thing is so interesting because it's like, did you like the movie? Yeah. Then okay. it's, yeah. Check mark 92%. Yeah. That's why. So I like, I think like on that sort of scale, if yes or no, did you like this movie? Hell Absolutely. Yeah. And then if I was to give it a score, I think it's more towards like a five, five and a half. I was thinking five. Five and a half, six. Yeah. Not five, five and a half, six. Yeah. Because I think that I really liked a lot of this movie and I think it was great. But as a movie compared to other movies, I, I think it was pretty average, yeah, you know? totally. I get that. That's a very but valid I think way of describing it. From a DC Warner Brothers movie standpoint... This is a great second step from having Aquaman, <laughs> Aquaman, and then this because you had Wonder Woman, which was so well received and is such a good movie, yep. and then doing Justice League, but then coming back with Aquaman, which like we haven't seen, but like reviews seem to be pretty positive or in the middle, and then having this, you're like, okay, maybe they're going a different way from like the history of bloated DC movies. This was so this you're, was you're right, very self-contained, refreshing. yeah. Yeah, totally. And yeah, you're right. Like this is a very self-contained story. It's a very the pace is great. I think that's one thing we didn't really touch on, but we I think we both agree. Yeah, it's it, brisk. It's just sort of it's brisk. It's like two hours, but you yeah. sort of like it gets to a nice pace pretty early. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, I thought characters were great. I thought acting was pretty great. Um, but yeah, I think the only thing my kind of complaints is yeah, like cinematography and and music was pretty just, crap. It was just plain. It was just so plane and that was sort of our complaint with velvet buzzsaw earlier think yeah. like that in outside yeah because like know. triple frontier great really great. nice looking yeah but also, uh, high flying bird yeah again unreal yeah maybe one of my favorite ones actually yeah same uh but yeah i kind of wish maybe they took a, some more risk I felt with the like, villain i don't know if they need to elsewhere though uh i just kind of wish maybe there was like some of the CGI stuff, like him flying, it was like very easy. I don't know. It was just like maybe that's like a very minor thing and kind of nitpicky. But I, I don't know. I just kind of wish that maybe they did some bigger stuff. It just felt a little small scale. Yeah, totally. Like it, they could have sort of gone a little farther, but they sort of just stayed very self-contained, like we were saying. Um, but other than that, that's sort of a very minor thing. Yeah. But so what do yeah, you do? other than that, like I think just like the little bits with. Um, the cinematography and how it kind of looked. Um, but I, that being said, I really liked the color the entire movie. There was like a lot of very vibrant color, especially with like the costumes and in contrast with him being in the city, which was very like dull and, and, you know, kind of grimy, but then yeah. you have him and he's like very fresh and he's like bright and he's colorful and his, it sort of reflected his, his personality as well. And, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think five is pretty, pretty like acceptable number to give it five out of seven yeah nice uh was there anything else cool uh that was shazam starring zachary levi mark strong um asher angel and jack dylan glazer among Um, others sorry among others among others there's lots of famous people in this um yeah that was twin speaks you catch us on instagram at twin speaks pod you can get Andrew at Anemonium on social media. I'm at Kid Combo underscore on Twitter. Uh, tweet at us. Try and get at us. Uh, we'll keep you updated about whether or not Andrew's ads show up with Lucenza and Burt Spees. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, <laughs> shit. Already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly so scared. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.